So let me show you how to think about the harmonic, deriving that uh, harmonic functions fact um, by putting u and u plus iv back together again, just like we couldn't do with Humpty Dumpty. I want to claim, and this uh, justifies something I said with an annotation. I had to correct this with an annotation because I made a silly mistake in a previous video. Is that we can? It's really useful to define d by dz bar to be one half of d by dx plus i d by dy. Why the plus when this is a bar? There's a bar there. Why the one half? We'll see in a minute. Um, and d by dz we define in a very analogous way, but just the conjugate of that. Okay. The idea here, as I alluded to before, is to think of z and z bar as a different set of variables from x and y. It's almost like kind of rotating variables, um, but it's using i's. And it's really, in, a, in an essential way, using the fact that there's i's both in the domain and the range of this function. So it's a little subtle, but we're basically saying, um, can we think of something just as a function of z or just as a function of z bar? So let me do a, f a couple of examples of this notation to, and, and justify it with these examples, and then show how it provides a very quick, clean proof of the fact that the components of a um, complex analytic function, a complex differentiable function, are harmonic. So there's four calculations we would want to do. For example, d by dz of z bar. If we're really thinking of these as kind of new alternate independent variables, these should be zero because it's like d by dx of y, okay? And it's pretty easy to set this up. So this is a minus by my definition above, and this will go a long way to, def to justifying that. And then z bar is x minus i y. Okay, I get the one half. d by dx of x is one. d by dy of x is zero, so minus i times zero d by dx of y is also 0, so minus i times 0. And then minus i times minus i, what is that? Well, i squared is minus 1, and then two minuses. So it's minus, and then d by dy of y is 1. Aha, these all cancels, and you get 0, as advertised. Still doesn't explain the 1 half, but the next one will explain the 1 half. What about d by dz of z? That would better be 1 for this to make any sense at all. That's why the 1 half. For some reason, I always forget that. Well, I'll, I might tell you in another video why I always forget the one half, because in another similar place, it doesn't show up. Um, so this is going to be same operator, but now on x plus i y. Okay. D by dx of x is one. Similarly, the cross terms still die. D by dy of x is zero. D by dx of y is zero. I'm not even going to write them down. But now minus i times plus i is a plus one. Aha! That's why the one half has to be there you get one, okay? So that's pretty cool, okay? And I don't think I'll do it out explicitly. It's really, really similar. d by dz bar of z, ooh, z, just z, not z bar, is zero, and d by dz bar of z bar is one. And again, that's why the one half has to be there if you do the calculation carefully, okay? So for example, think about like when we went back to, um, when we first started in analyzing these functions, we discovered that z and z squared and z cubed, all monomials in z were nice. They had complex derivatives. Um, whereas z bar and things built out of z bars are not. Well, so similarly, d by dz bar of like 5z minus 3z squared plus 17z cubed that's going to be 0. Um, it's not too hard to, to show that all your usual rules, product rules, and stuff work for these guys, just like they work with ordinary partial derivatives, because it's just a combination of ordinary partial derivatives. Okay, That's going to be 0. We also know that because uh, d by dz bar is how to detect whether a function is complex differentiable, and we know that that's complex differentiable. Whereas d by dz bar of something built out of z bars won't be 0. And something built out of z's and z bars minus 3, like z bar squared plus 17 z bar to the fifth, that's not going to be 0 because it has those z bars in it. So that's about as far as I'm going to go on the road um, to the, that, lang that language, except I just want to show you it makes a very, very cool slick proof about the, La the, uh, the Laplacian. I want to calculate the Laplacian of a complex differentiable function. Before, 
I actually just did it separately as u and u and v, u plus i v, okay. But I claim that this uh, this language with the dz and the dz bar, d by dz and d by dz bar, lets us do this all in one fell swoop. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take. I'm going to see what happens if I combine them together. Okay. Now this is going to be um, something very interesting. That is going to be one half d by dx minus i d by dy, and then d by dx plus i d by dy. That should look familiar. When you put complex conjugates together, good things happen, and usually um, positive squares come out. Magnitudes, ooh, and there's a half there. So it's all 1 fourth. OK, so you get d by dx of d by dx. Now remember, what I really want to do is I really want to think of there's a function here that I'm really eventually going to take the derivative of a function. But I'm just really going to formally combine these guys. It's going to be d squared dx squared. And if you want, just think that's all going to act on f eventually. But the derivative with respect to x, derivative with respect to x, you get d squared dx squared. Uh, from the other non-cross term, you get minus i plus i, which is plus 1 d squared dy squared. Hey, that looks familiar. And then what happens? With a difference of squares, we expect everything else to cancel out. And it does, by Clairaut's theorem. d by dx of d by dy of f with an i, and then minus i d by dy d by dx of f. Those will die. OK. So those cancel out, just as very much the usual difference of squares kind of formula. That's just 1 fourth of the Laplacian of f. OK. Now, that's where I'm thinking of the Laplacian as something that can eat a complex valued function. That's OK, because I just do it separately in the components. OK? So um, suppose that f was a complex differentiable function. So far, I actually haven't uh, imagined that yet. I haven't, haven't uh, dealt with that. f could be any function, not necessarily complex differentiable. But if it's complex differentiable, it's already 0 here. And so certainly, if I take another derivative of it, it's going to be 0. So if df by dz bar equals 0, then the Laplacian is 0. And that's just a nice shorthand, if you will, for these guys both individually being harmonic real-valued functions then put together separately as a real and imaginary part of a function. Okay, So these are both separately harmonic functions. So this kind of terminology with the d by dz and d by dz bar is very, very powerful. And I might well come back to it if I feel like it um, in a later video. Okay, so But I thought that was a really cool way to uh, show you a tiny little application of them.